Hey guys, welcome to phase two. I'm going to show you how you can book meetings for your marketing agency or consultancy agency using Instagram and outreach uh, with Loom videos. I'm sure you've heard of this strategy before and it is, you know, marketing 101 when doing cold outreach on Instagram. But I just want to show you guys how I do it on a you know, very simple level. And we actually do have more advanced trainings around how we, you know, create 35 Loom videos a day um, fully automated. So that's something which is going to be coming in the future. But for now, um, I want to show, show you the basics and how you can understand the process before jumping, you know, a few gears ahead and then really not understanding where you are. Um, I apologize for the Slack notifications coming in as well. So bear with me on that. Um, but yeah, we'll just break straight through and uh, let me go down this. So the must haves for you to start this process is to have an Instagram page for your business, have some sort of content uploaded onto your Instagram page. So people that do click on it are going to understand what you guys do and what you offer and also making sure you have a, a clear bio with a website or funnel link in there as well so people can then navigate and just find out more information about you and your business so that if you do come across a bit spammy obviously cold dms of any nature is um you know it's it's a bit on the line of being shady or not so i definitely recommend having as much uh, valid information as possible so that potential prospects will um you know understand that you are legit so once you have those three checked off um i kind of show you what we we have kind of have here so this is one of our Instagram accounts. So we have, we have like a cool little Instagram grid, um, which kind of breaks down our, uh, you know, what we're about and what we offer our clients. We have some results as well in our, our story highlights. We have our logo, we have our marketing message, and then we have a link to our website. So it's all there front row on our Instagram page. So everyone can look at it when need be. And yeah, so that's, I recommend just getting that sorted straight away. If you don't have an Instagram, upload one and do that content, do everything I said before you get started. Now, once that's done, the next step is finding your ideal customer on Instagram. There's a couple of ways to do this, which I recommend. Number one is to search Instagram with hashtags, brand names, um, you know, name of uh, niche, so like furniture or home decoration, for example. Or you can use your lead list, which you can scrape from a numerous amount of sites. We actually mentioned ways of sourcing that in our last training. So if you go back and watch phase one, where we show you how to do personalized cold email outreach, it will show you where we... Um, you know, source a lot of our, our leads as well. So we can leverage those lead lists to find Instagram URLs and then um, get in front of our customers that way. The next step of having um, found a customer or um, found your lead list and have a, a Instagram URL is to simply make sure they are qualified. So we have to check their website to make sure they're legit and they actually have a brand and they're selling something. Um, and then make sure they have a strong follower account. You don't want to work with brands that don't have an Instagram presence, um, not because it means they're not going to be a good client, but it means they're not going to respond probably to your email, uh, to your Instagram DM. So you're better off, you know, speaking with these guys somewhere else like LinkedIn or email. So make sure they have a uh, brand presence on Instagram. Make sure they have some followers. They're not a new page. Make sure they're uploading somewhat consistently and up to date. So, you know, they're checking their Instagram DMs as well. So that's just something to take note of as well. And this will obviously give you a great indication of the lead quality before you make contact. And then from here, you want to send them a message. Just introduce yourself, you know, say, hey, my name's James. I work for X. I help X achieve X. Um, I actually created a personalized video for you guys that shows you holes in your current marketing strategy. What email is it best to send this across to? Something super simple like that. You can obviously go back and listen to what I said again. And it's really important to test different message templates. But the goal is to introduce yourself, to let them know who you are and what you do, who you serve, and also why you're there. So what I like to do is say the personalized loom or video is already being created. So I'm just looking for an email address to send the, the video to. I'm not requesting if they want one. I'm informing them that I've created something for them, like a gift. And all they have to do is reply with an email address, reducing the friction and making it more chance they're going to say yes. Okay. So just a little tip for you is there as well. And then always remember to finish the sentence with obviously what is the best email address because you want to take this away from Instagram and, and contact them by email because Instagram DMs are wanted by Instagram managers, you know, interns, apprentices, uh, not necessarily the decision maker. So uh, the best route to go down is to get the email address and then send the loom to that email address. Okay. And then, so in terms of doing this, you want to do this process at least 60 times a day, no more than 70 times a day. So you don't get banned or shadow banned from Instagram. This way that you can ensure that you're, you're sending as many new cold DMs as possible to as many highly qualified brands or business owners or you know, businesses overall as possible. Obviously my experience is with e-commerce, but this definitely does work for B2B um, lead gen services and really any uh, way of contacting a business. So it's not just for e-commerce, it's just um, what I tend to lean on heavily for e-commerce and our agency. So once you've done that, 
You can then send your 60 to 70 new cold DMs a day. And then you wanna make sure that you track these on a spreadsheet. So let me just show you an example of this. Um, this is one of our spreadsheets we use to track our Instagram outreach. And then you can see here, my VA, but in your instance, if you don't have a VA, start doing it yourself. You can just import the URL you have messaged and then have the date followed. And then you can also add follow-ups as well. So I recommend following up with each lead about every three days if they don't respond and make sure to follow up, you know, at least five times or in, you know, a better way of looking at it is keep following up until they say yes or no. And if they don't reply, just keep following up and ultimately that as much as you can. Obviously it can be quite tedious. That's why it's good to get a virtual assistant on board to help you with these mundane tasks. But if you're starting out, just, you know, keep um, following up and be persistent because that's where the money is. Um, so you have that reported in your spreadsheet and then you can just follow that down. And then after one week, on average, after sending 60 uh, uh, sorry, message requests or Instagram DMs a day, you're gonna be looking at about eight replies on average a day with five of those being positive. If it's any less than that, I recommend checking your lead quality, but also the message template, okay? The chances are your lead quality is pretty bad and that you're targeting brands or businesses that aren't actually monitoring their DMs or the lead quality, um, or the message template, sorry, it just isn't, isn't resonating with them. They're, they're, they're not having the urge to reply. So you've got to really test that. I'm not going to go over the, the ways of testing that today, but you, any you know split testing or any um, messaging components on your outreach for your agency should be split tested continuously because you want to try and find your optimum performance and make sure your KPIs are as good as they can be. So once you've done that for a week, like I said, eight replies, five being positive. Um, if you get less than that, you know what to do. And then what happens when you get a positive reply? So when you get a positive reply, the first thing you wanna do is update your spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet that we update looks something like this, um, where we put in the URL, the email address, and then the status of um, needs to be sent or sent Loom video. And then the same as before, we follow up as many times as possible, um, you know, at least seven times before giving up. But ideally, I mean, I just said to our team last week, there isn't a limit to our follow up. If the lead quality is there, if we have the email address and we know we can help that business, we are not gonna stop contacting them until they give us a firm no. Um, and that's okay, right? Because we know we can help them. We know it's in their best interest to listen to us and watch the video. So that's why we do what we do. And just make sure you have it recorded. It doesn't have to look like this, whatever makes sense for you. You know, definitely use Google spreadsheets. You can use something else as well. But just, you know, control what you're doing, make it simple and easy to do. So you import the new lead into the spreadsheet. You can then go away and create the Loom video. So how I personally create our Loom videos or how my team creates our Loom videos is very simple, simple system. So what we do is we start on their website and then we always talk about, you know, hey, my name's James, I do X, Y, and Z. Here is some case studies which I've achieved over the last X amount of time. Because you wanna start with being on their website. So visually as a thumbnail, they're gonna see, oh, this is a personalized video. I can see my website. I'm now interested to actually click on this link and see what James has to say about me and my business. And then what you wanna actually say at this point is, about yourself. The first 30 seconds is the probably the best chance you've got at selling yourself and for them to continue to listen to what you have to say. So sell them on who you are, what you offer, and the case studies that you have achieved for other clients like them, okay? And then you can dive into the reason for creating the video. So you can go to their Instagram, say, hey, I found your Instagram, go to their website, give them some feedback on their marketing on their website and their layout and their structure. Depending on what your service is, you just wanna get their attention by going to their social medias, by going to their website. What you actually say to them doesn't have to correlate with what they're seeing on their screen. You could say like, you know, hey, um, I'm reaching out because I see you're missing this on your website. I can see that you can do better content, content on Instagram, but actually that's not what I'm here for. I do X and I actually just wanna to speak to you for five minutes and I wanna to prove to you that I can help you. Um, I really think, you know, we can do this because of X, Y, and Z. If you have five minutes spare this week, I'd love to jump on a quick Zoom call with you and provide as much value as possible and just try and push you guys in the right uh, direction because what you have um, as a business is undeniably strong and we just want to help, you know, promote you uh, and really just get, get your business to the level that you want it to get to in 2022. So you can re re reinforce the fact you're there to help and you're not there to sell, okay? And then once they've, you know, watched the video, the chances are they're going to have some sort of interest in learning more because you don't want to show them all your cards uh, on the first video. Um, and also to make sure the video is only about three minutes long. Okay, so then you have your video, you can send it off to them on your email, um, you know, to say, hey, my name is James, I spoke to you on Instagram, um, as advised, here is the personalized video we created for you. And then you can put, uh, you know, your calendar link at the bottom of the email saying, it'd be great to catch up or great to connect for five minutes this week, please select the time that works for you or let me know a time that works for you if you cannot find the time on my calendar. 
And then the message is sent, the connection has been made. And now you just want to follow up with that email until they reply. Okay, so like seven, eight, nine, ten follow ups every two or three days, um, just prompting them to watch the video. And if they say, hey, I've watched the video, I'm not interested, say, cool, I appreciate your help or I appreciate your uh, feedback, sorry, and then just move on. But until they respond, letting you know they've watched the video, then you know you don't you shouldn't stop following up and that's kind of really how it works so you're sending 60 new dms a day about five new loom videos a day you're following up on your instagram you're following up on your emails and really just pushing for people to give you a response okay and to give you kind of some analytic or kpi breakdown of what we're seeing on average with this exact system so we have other systems but this one with exactly what i mentioned we're seeing about a 10 percent booking rate for every single loom video we send after following up about five times. So about two weeks after sending a Loom video, there's a 10% chance they're gonna book a call, which is pretty strong. Meaning if we can send five a day, 130 Looms uh, you know, a month or whatever it works out to, that's 13 meetings a month from not a lot of work. And it's very easy to delegate this work to a VA. I mean, it takes no more than three or four hours a day to do this um, as a VA. So you know that, that can work out to 12, even $15. So really not a lot for how much you're getting back in return. And then, you know, you're sitting at, after phase one and phase two, you're sitting at 20 meetings by those two SOPs that I shared with you. Um, and that is about, on average, a two to three client, new client success rate, which for a lot of people, and, you know, can be a, a huge amount of money and a huge push in the right direction. Um, so guys, I don't want to go on for too much longer. I want to keep this somewhat short. I just want to make sure you understand the basics on what I'm, on what I'm saying, you know, how you can actually just implement this, how you can attract the right customers, check the lead quality, how you can get a response, how you can then position yourself as an expert and request five minutes of their time so you can get them on a call. And then from there, you can start your sales process. And I'm sure I've missed a few little tweaks here and there about you know how to set this up. So if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, via email, via my Facebook group or wherever you saw this video and I'll get back to you ASAP. Um, but in the meantime, have a wonderful day and I'll speak to you guys very soon. Cheers.